If you were following along in the previous chapter, which was all about the interface, then you will no doubt have opened up this document here called Guardian Start. If not, well, then you can find it by going to the file menu and choosing open. And here on the desktop, I have my semester one files. I'll double left click in there, head into newspapers, then to Guardian, and then it's Guardian Start. And then when this document opens up, do make sure that you have all of the grids and guides available on screen. You can find that by going to view, down to screen mode, and make sure the normal screen mode is active. And then I'll click away. So first things first, um, if you wish to make changes to your artwork, then you must select in order to affect. And we do that by going to the top of the tools panel to the tool called the selection tool. And if I click on that to make sure it's active, when I hover my cursor away from it, you'll notice that my cursor icon now appears to be identical to the tool in the tools panel. That is until I hover over something in my layout that could be selected. Now in the case here of my text frame, notice now when I'm hovering over my text, my cursor gains a black square, indicating that if I left click once now, I'll select the container that that text lives inside of. And incidentally, Everything inside of InDesign lives in a container. It's rather like a suitcase and the contents can vary. It could be text, it could be images, it could be just a color, but everything lives in a frame. Also on the right hand side of the interface, the properties panel now springs to life and it shows me things that are attributed to this frame that's selected. So in this case, because it's text, it tells me the font family, the weight, the size of the text, the alignment and those kind of things. So you could, from here, directly change that text frame from those options. It's another reason why the properties panel is incredibly handy. Once you've finished making a change to your artwork, then you need to deselect. And the easiest way to do that is to hover your cursor off the side of the page where there is no content usually and left click once and that will deselect. You'll also find the option available under the edit menu when something is active and you can click on deselect all. Now, in the case of the large red X in the middle of the page here, and this is page one. If you take your selection tool and hover over that, you can be certain that you're going to select it by hovering over some part of the X that runs through the middle. If I left click once, that activates the frame. Now, placeholder frames can have text added to them or images or just colors. In our case, we're going to add the image for the front page of the Guardian. So with it selected, InDesign knows that this is the thing that we want to affect. If you want to bring in artwork into InDesign, go up to the file menu, go down the list, and you'll be looking for a command called place. So if you wish to import uh, existing data, such as images and text, place command is where you'll need to go. Click on place. This will take me back to my most recently active folder where we've opened this document from. Everything to do with uh, the text and the images is stored in a folder called links. And if I double left click in there, here we have some images and some Microsoft Word files. So for now, I'm going to hover over and left click on the image called cover1.jpg and then click on open. And it's always worthwhile making sure that you've filled that container completely. If you've created a container in your layout, it's likely you want to fill all of it. So either in the properties panel over on the right hand side, you'll have frame fitting options that's replicated up at the top, just above the checkbox for auto fit in the control panel. And if I hover over the first icon on the left hand side, it reads fill frame proportionally, meaning that if I click on that, all the frame will be filled. The other option would be to click on fit content proportionally. Now, when I do that, every little bit of that image will be visible inside the container, but I now get a strip on the left and the right hand side that isn't filled. Well, I want to go back to the previous option, fill frame proportionally. And that's how you drop an image into InDesign in a placeholder frame. And once we're done, click to the side of the page, and then you can go up to the file menu at the top and you can choose save. Now InDesign's taking me back to the links folder and that's because we placed artwork from there. If I go back up one level, you can see the Guardian Start IDML file is where we started from. Uh, now InDesign is asking us to save this. It will have to be as an INDD, a regular InDesign file. And the version is shown at the bottom under the format menu. For me, I'm going to be saving in the InDesign 2021 version. So with that all set in place, I'll click on save and all of our edits are now captured.